Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Terry Kramer, that's spelled K-R-A-M-E-R. -E I live in Clancy, Montana, that's House District 75, Senate District 38. I am a small business owner in the shooting sports profession. My company, Kramer Designs Corporation, designs and manufactures ultralight, ultra-compact bipods, tripods, and optic mounting accessories for hunting and trekking. I have spent three decades in the shooting sports industry. I have 25 years exhibiting at the world's largest and most influential hunting and sporting events and conventions. This includes, but it's not limited to, Safari Club International, the Wild Sheep Foundation, the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, the Mule Deer Foundation, Ovis Grand Slam, and the SHOT Show. During my many years inside the shooting sports profession, I have never heard or discussed with anyone any concerns from my peers about threats to the Second Amendment from an Article 5 Convention of States effort. Taking this one step further, as an ardent believer and supporter of COS, over the past three to four years, I have actively displayed in our, in our booth at these shows, COS posters and wore COS buttons. And these posters and buttons have initiated many discussions with my peers and customers, the vast majority seeking more information and more knowledge on the topic, but also a significant number of ardent supporters. There has never, there has not been a single discussion that I can recall concerning COS Article 5's efforts and the possibility that would have any kind of infringement on the Second Amendment. We as a nation have over 300 years of convention experience going back to pre-1787 colonial times. The Convention of States has even taken the further step and held simulations on the Convention of States for proposing amendments that dust off the cobwebs and lay the groundwork for the new convention. To address any concerns about a runaway convention infringing on the Second Amendment, I want to quickly share with you five points as presented by Rob Nadelson. Point number one is this convention is limited by the scope of the call. In this case, that scope is A, limiting the power of the federal government, B, fiscal restraints on the federal government, and C, term limits on, the on federal officials. Number two, commissioners are appointed and limited by instructions from state legislators. That's you folks. And they are accountable to you. Number three, all proposed amendments are subject to one of two ratification methods as written in Article 5. That's either state legislators or legislatures or state conventions. Number four, state ratification process requires three quarters or 38 states to approve that 78 legislative bodies across the United States. So ask yourself, what is the likelihood that 38 legislative bodies are going to approve any amendment that they didn't want and they didn't send their commissioners to the convention to propose? And the last point that Rob made was state nullification as championed by some of our opponents of Article 5 could always be used for um, nullifying proposed amendments. Might run into some constitutional roadblocks there, but that's an option. So the process contains many, many checkpoints and backups. In reality, the risk of a runaway convention is basically zero. Taking that to the next step, what is the risk of infringing on the Second Amendment? Also zero. So now I want to just look at this from a little bit different perspective. Ask yourself, who is the preeminent voice for protecting the Second Amendment in the United States? And without question, that's the National Rifle Association. I've been a member of the NRA for going over 35 years now, and monthly I receive a magazine called the American Rifleman, and it is a combination of firearm articles as well as Second Amendment news. Since the COS project has gained a more national stage, I have consciously made the additional effort to focus on that National Rifleman magazine and see if the NRA was ever going to make a statement or take a position on Convention of States. The silence is deadening. They don't have a position. The only thing I found were statements from the NRA's top lawyer on defending constitutional rights, Charles Cooper. He's a strong supporter of Convention of States and he's got um, several articles written out that you can read. So the same NRA that never misses the most minor infringements to the Second Amendment at either the national, state, or local level has never voiced a concern over Convention of States in Article 5. Read into that what you may. So when you hear opponents of the Convention of State bill say that there is a real danger of infringement to the Second Amendment, they either A, don't know what they're talking about, or B, are consciously misleading you. 
do your own research. The more knowledge you have and understanding our Convention of States in Article 5, the more confident you'll become that this is our last and best opportunity to save our Constitution and our Union. The real threat to the Second Amendment comes out of Washington, D.C. I thank you for this opportunity to speak today. I'm here live in Philadelphia at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. When you hear the phrase, lives, fortunes, and sacred honor, these are the folks we should think of, those who anonymously gave their lives. Well, today you have a chance to volunteer. You need to volunteer for conventionofstates.com, the movement that's going to save the country. These folks were willing to step up and give everything. We need you to give just a little bit. Go to conventionofstates.com and volunteer today.